In a recent episode of Louder with Crowder, Stephen Crowder decided to dedicate a couple of minutes to a segment on black farmers. And rather than actually trying to grapple with the substance of a subsidy that farmers will be receiving, farmers of color in particular, uh, he decided to just like make fun of black people. And this segment basically devolved into a competition between him and his co-hosts, and they all tried to compete to say the most racist thing. Now, this isn't the first time that uh, Steven Crowder has said something explicitly racist or homophobic or transphobic, but in this clip, like, this is next level. Like, even for Steven Crowder, this is, this is yikes. This is bad. Here's the clip. I don't know where you find this many farmers of color, uh, but they did. And 5.2 billion are being allocated exclusively for colored farmers. Farmers of color, farmers of color, roll the tape. We begin today's show looking at a major provision in President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill that aims to address decades of discrimination against black, Hispanic, Native American and Asian American farmers who've historically been excluded from government agricultural programs. The American Rescue mm. Plan sets aside $10.4 billion for agriculture support and allocates about half the funds to farmers of color who are, quote, subjected to racial or ethnic prejudice because of their identity what? as members of a group, unquote. The U.S. Commission on Civil Rights confirmed as long ago as 1965, the U.S. Department of Agriculture discriminated against black farmers, but little was done to address the problem. A hundred years ago? Yeah, uh, most happy about the new policy, these people. So, yeah. I'm going to oh. buy a plow, man. <laughs> I'm going to plant that corn. <laughs> going to get a John Deere. Barack Obama, mother, I'm the president of plowing that ass. You. Yeah. I thought the last thing they would want to do was be farmers. Wasn't that a big problem yeah. for hundreds yeah. of years? Yeah. Isn't that why Arsenio yeah. Hall called himself the urban man's Johnny Carson? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are people, are people lining up out in the middle of Cornfield, Iowa for new dunks? Uh, how would you prove <laughs> this, by the way? Like, how would you prove yeah. that you've been discriminated against? You don't against? have to. You just Well, I didn't say, get that loan. Sir, you had no credit. Well, that should not have stopped me from getting the loan. Uh, I planted a Hennessy tree. <laughs> But it's not growing. Well, I, well, technically, it did grow, but that shit ain't XO. Mm -mm. I put it in the ground. <laughs> I planted a VSOP XO tree. I'm getting in some niche esoteric cognac humor, motherfucker. Um, Don't white people just go to their neighborhoods and build urban farms and ruin their <laughs> yeah? Yes. Isn't that what how it works? In Detroit. Like, yeah. Turns out the, uh, the, 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 the soil content is a high level of meth. Yeah, crazy. Oh, Whoa. Wow, I didn't know. That and teeth. Just There's <laughs> random teeth <laughs> littered teeth. everywhere. There's and uh, by the way, pain in my arugula. <laughs> Yikes. First of all, meth is a white person drug. Get it right. Uh, second of all, I don't get the joke. Like, this is supposed to be comedy. He's a comedian, a conservative comedian, but nonetheless, he identifies as a comedian. What's the joke? Is the joke that black people exist and they're stupid or is the joke that uh black farmers don't exist and if they did exist because black people are stupid black farmers would be stupid and it would be funny like i don't understand like i'm struggling to wrap my mind around what the punchline is here it just seemed like you wanted to shit on black people for literally no reason whatsoever other than you're racist and you're uninformed about the necessity of that $5.2 billion subsidy that you watched a video about, but apparently learned nothing from. The reason why that subsidy is necessary is because black farmers have been historically disadvantaged because of racism. Had you decided to do a quick, like, five-minute Google search, you would have learned this. And as Summer Sewell of The Guardian explains, the number of black farmers in America peaked in 1920 when there were 949,889 farmers. Today, of the country's 3.4 million total farmers, only 1.3% or 45,508 are black, according to new figures from the U.S. Department of Agriculture released this month. They own a mere 0.52% of America's farmland. By comparison, 95% of U.S. farmers are white. The black farmers who have managed to hold on to their farms eke out a living today. They make less than $40,000 annually compared with over $190,000 by white farmers, which is probably because their average acreage is about one quarter that of white farmers.
So that last paragraph there gives you some insight as to why black farmers are disappearing and why this subsidy is necessary. Because less property leads to less profits. And since black wealth is disappearing and uh, blacks have less property historically than whites, well, you can see why black farmers are struggling. So the farmers of color that exist need the additional assistance that they otherwise wouldn't necessarily need if they were already advantaged in society. But it's not just historical racism that's the issue here. It's also modern-day racism. And the article that we just read cites the story of a farmer named John Boyd, who explains specifically how he makes less money as a black farmer because he's black. In Baskerville, Virginia, huge sunrises turn ponds into fiery gulfs. Strangers and cars wave as they pass. Food is fried and smothered. Things move slowly. This is also Trump country, with support displayed on bumper stickers and hand-painted roadside signs. Dixieland, as Boyd calls it, has palpable racial tension. He is a big man with deep-set eyes, usually in the shadow of a cowboy hat brim. His voice could rumble floorboards. Boyd, 53, seems most content bouncing in the seat of his tractor. Smoke tufts marking his trail. He'll harvest the soybeans he's busy planting today in the fall once they're about knee high. He needs 45 bushels from each acre to make a profit. To avoid being docked, getting priced down for moisture or debris in the bushels, he will ask his wife, Cara Brewer Boyd, to enlist her white stepfather to sell the beans for him. When the other man takes Boyd's beans, he's not docked, but complimented. I lose money if I sell them myself, he says. In 2019, that shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be losing money because I'm black. So do you understand what's happening? Do you see why black farmers are disadvantaged? Because when he sells the beans, they'll say, oh, well, look at that. There's, there's moisture in it. But conspicuously enough, when he has his white stepfather sell the beans, no complaints. Hmm, I wonder why that is. And to Steven Crowder, black farmers, I mean, that's that's preposterous. That's not a thing, except it is a thing. And they're disadvantaged in comparison with white farmers. And that's just like one example of the way that black farmers are dis disadvantaged. Uh, another issue is that Boyd and 400 other farmers literally had to come together to sue the USDA because they were denied loans and other services provided by the government that farmers are supposed to get. But because they're black, they were not getting said loans given to farmers. But Steven Crowder thinks that this is a joke. Nobody's laughing at your dumbass jokes. You're just being racist and you're trying to pass that off as comedy when in actuality we see right through you. You're trying to use the comedy defense as a shield for your racism when you're just fucking racist. So, I mean, this is bad even for Steven Crowder, but um, he just continues to do it because his uh, audience of rubes is going to continue to reward him on Patreon and by buying his merchandise when he says more outrageous and explicitly racist things because um, that's what they like, apparently. They think it's funny to say bad things about black people and gay people and trans people. So, I mean, there's not much left to say. That segment speaks for itself, but holy shit, that is, uh, that is some next level uh, racism right there from Steven Crowder. Uh, he's like almost saying what he thinks out loud. He's like really close. Not quite there yet, but really getting there.